After going to the NBA Finals this past season, the rich got richer when the Boston Celtics added both Malcolm Brogdon and Danilo Gallinari to their roster. Executives around the league even believe the Celtics won the offseason, as an August 30th survey conducted by ESPN's Tim Bontemps showed that executives thought the Celtics had the best offseason. All of this buzz around the Celtics led to Vegas giving them the best odds to win the title in 2023. But that was before all hell broke loose. It started in early September when the newly acquired Danilo Gallinari tore his ACL while playing for Italy in Eurobasket 2022. After that, things were relatively quiet in the NBA world until a couple of days ago when Ime Udoka broke the internet. Yudoka ended up getting suspended for the entirety of the 2022-23 season following several team violations of sexual misconduct. And to make matters worse, a day after the bombshell news about their head coach, the Celtics organization announced that starting center Robert Williams III would miss the first 8-12 to 12 weeks of the regular season after having surgery done on his left knee. So in a span of less than 24 hours, the Boston Celtics lost both their head coach and starting center. So let's talk about what this means for the Seas moving forward, and if it'll be enough to cost the defending Eastern Conference champion a trip back to the NBA Finals. First, before anything else, we need to address how the Celtics turned around their season and then their actual playoff run itself. It all started after a January 6th loss to the New York Knicks when RJ Barrett banked in a three at the buzzer that sent the Celtics back to the locker room with an 18-21 record, which at the time was good for 11th in the Eastern Conference. And Ime Udoka kept it real during the post-game interview. Take a listen. Uh, repetitive result that's happening either we're gonna make some adjustments and get tired of it or it's gonna keep happening it wasn't about the last play again it was everything leading up to it and we need some leadership somebody that can calm us down and not get rattled when everything starts to go a little south and coach Udoka was absolutely right it was the same thing time and time again with this Celtics team they had blown four leads of at least 19 points up to that point in the season so when they blew a 25 point lead to New York that night Ime was fed up and he called the team out claiming that they lacked mental toughness and this struck a chord with the team as they went 33 and 10 from that point on and coach Udoka showed them an entirely new perspective on winning his plan all along was to make Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown playmakers and to put an emphasis on defense he just needed everyone to buy in and after that Knicks loss he had their attention Jason Tatum went from averaging 3.7 assists before January 6th with a 1.32 assist to turnover ratio which is comparable to Rockets rookie Josh Christopher but in 41 games after that point Tatum would up his averages to the tune of 4.8 assists per game with a 1.60 assist to turnover ratio which is on pace with Jordan Poole Jalen Brown meanwhile experienced an even larger improvement as he went from averaging just 2.6 assists on a putrid 0.82 assist to turnover ratio before January 6th to 4.1 assists on a 1.71 assist to turnover ratio after January 6th. Dude quite literally went from passing like the Nasus onto Takumpo to Giannis onto Takumpo. So finally, Ime's words started to sink in with the team and his best players started to take leadership. But the Celtics defense is what truly turned their season around. Boston had far and away the best defense in the NBA after January 6th, posting a 106.4 defensive rating. And while most people may look to the 2022 Defensive Player of the Year, Marcus Smart, as the catalyst behind this improvement, the real hero was Robert Williams III. Ime Udoka wanted to use Rob Will in the Romer role, similar to how the Bucks use Giannis. And for those who may not know what a Romer is, it's essentially like a free safety in football. The free safety's job is essentially to read and react. They're often given a zone to cover so they can offer a last line of support to the cornerbacks and linebackers if they get beat. For example, watch New England Patriots free safety Devin McCourty on this play. Josh Allen thinks he has John Brown open on a deep ball after beating the corner. 
but McCourty reads it and picks him off. It's similar in basketball, as the Time Lord's job defensively is to read and react. Coach Udoka started to put Rob primarily on power forwards, while giving Al Horford the task of defending centers. This gave Williams the opportunity to show how elite of a rim protector he is, as the Celtics frequently switched on pick and rolls, so when Rob guarded opposing centers, this took him away from the basket more often than not. But this change allowed him to provide interior support and do what he does best, which is protect the rim, leading to a career high in blocks per game during the 2021-22 season. Anyways, all of Ime's changes allowed the Celtics to finally break out, and the only question was could they carry this into the postseason? And the answer was yes. They went all the way to the finals, but fell just short to a dynasty led by the greatest shooter of all time. So of course, when they add a 20 point per game score in Malcolm Brogdon, who can also playmake at a high level, and a solid bench score in Danilo Gallinari, people are gonna think they won the offseason. But now Gallo is out for the season, the coach that turned the entire team around is out for the season, and they're without their defensive anchor in Robert Williams III for the first 8 to 12 weeks, which for reference is the first 16 to 30 games of the new season. But here's the thing. Boston started out last season rough, so who's to say they can't afford to do that again while Rob Will's out? As much as the Time Lord's injury might hurt them at the beginning of the season, the Celtics have proved that they can cover ground before. As far as Coach Udoka goes, I don't really see a problem here either, because at the end of the day, coaching only goes so far if your team isn't committed to getting better and this was shown by the Celtics' first 50 or so games last season. But the Celtics got over the hump and went to the finals. Yes, because of Coach Udoka, but in larger part because of the players. So while the loss of Ime Udoka may be a culture shock at first, I don't think it's as big of a problem as some people may make it out to be. Interim head coach Joe Mazzulla is already very respected within the organization, and he's someone that the players will want to play for. When Ime was just talking about building his coaching staff this year, he said that when he was building it, the players stepped up and said, we need to keep Joe Mazzulla. Why did you feel that he was such an important member of the coaching staff, and how have you seen him grown as a coach? I love Joe, and uh, I think you, you know, just being around him, you could tell how passionate he is about you know the guys and um, his craft, and he's gotten so much more knowledgeable and, and comfortable in his role as a coach. You, you've seen the growth from his first year and he's helped me out tremendously, you know, as a player and as a person. You know, everybody appreciates, you know, what he brings to this team. Um, and, you know, I'm glad that we, you know, have him. JT speaks highly of him and he's not the only one as the players told Ime to keep him on the staff. And now here we are. So now the only question is, can this team still win the finals despite their unfortunate circumstances? I'm gonna say no but it's not because of Ime Udoka or injuries to Robert Williams and Danilo Gallinari. It's because of competition. I fear that the Celtics blew their opportunity because if we're being honest, they didn't really feel like a team that would be in the finals every year. They barely got past the Milwaukee team without their second best player, barely beat a beat up Miami team, and then they lost three straight to Golden State after going up two games to one. And now they have to deal with a much deeper Eastern Conference, and even if they did make it out of the East, I just can't see them beating someone in the West and hanging a banner in 2023. But I hope you enjoyed. And with all that being said, peace.